Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. In a world filled with chaos, God's divine order reigns supreme. Apostle Oromo Sagi shares profound insights on how God sets order in our lives. He sees our every move, even in the secret places. Our obedience in the secret place yields open rewards in His perfect timing. Embrace His divine order and experience the abundant blessings He has in store for you. Father, this morning we ask, O oh God, that you pour out the rain of your grace. Let every hungry soul be satisfied. Take all the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. So finally, our guests, that plane landed today. <laughs> Like I said, he, he is an apostolic pathfinder. And through his spirit, there is a stream of grace that flows in the land on the account of his obedience to God. We welcome him into the territory, and he will be with us this evening. They're just resting. Please, you may take your seat. You may take your seat as you turn to... Second John chapter one. Second John chapter one verse number eight. Okay, let us let us begin from verse number six to eight. And this is love that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, you shall walk in it. Seven, for many deceivers have entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Now, if we take a moment subsequently to investigate the operation of the spirit of the Antichrist in the current, our current generation, those are some of the scriptures we'll be taking our bearing from in order to really understand the workings of the spirit of the Antichrist. It's against Christ. Against Christ. There's a spirit that is against Christ. And, and it has a philosophy, it has a doctrine, it has a perspective, and we need to be acquainted with it so that we will not become victims of the spirit of the age. Verse 8 is my emphasis. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we should receive a full reward. So this is the counsel from the apostle, bringing us to um, a, a point of caution that we should look to ourselves that we lose not. There's the possibility of us losing the things uh, that are being wrought in us by God. And if we contend sufficiently to ensure that we do not lose those things, the Bible says we we'll receive a full reward. Now, the reason why I began with this scripture and the idea of a full reward, are you there with me? Full reward is because there are, there are pockets of rewards that God gives us in time, pockets of rewards. But the ultimate full reward is not in this age. So when we talk about the reward for the believer will need to bring the 
perspective of the age to come into the equation so that we'll have a full understanding of the implications of our actions upon the face of the earth. But you must understand that if you are going to, by any means, receive a reward from heaven, one of the requirements is that you must not be a hypocrite. Another requirement is that you must understand uh, the hidden dwelling place of God in your heart, and you must insist not to turn away your face from the movements of God in the privacy of your spirit man. Because when you turn your face away from the movements of God, the protests that God is making about your life, you have decided to avoid judgment. Those protests that the Holy Spirit is making are actually symptoms of judgment so that you can, you can make adjustments because adjustments are still possible. But when you decide not to accept those judgments, then it means that you have decided that your own judgment will take place in the days to come. Do you understand that? So I would like us to still push on this matter of rewards. Because if the, uh, I've checked the motivation of people like Apostle Paul, Apostle Peter, for staying true to Jesus, for following through with the Holy Spirit, was for fighting the good fight of faith, their motivation, their strength, was that they had their eye on a reward economy, which was in the age that is to come. And so in order for you to be an accurate be believer, your eyes must be on that economy. Your eyes must be fixed on that economy. And it's only believers that want to be accurate in the days to come, in the age that is to come, that are conscious and that prioritize the issue that pertain to the divine order. So when you find another Christian, maybe he's your neighbor, and he's not concerned about the divine order. The reason why he's living as a Christian is because he heard that God gives people money. So he's doing business with God so that they can prosper. And his concern is not about the economy of the world. All right? Now, if you see that Christian, his values, his approach, the things he can do, the things, all right? are going to be different from one that wants to observe the requirements of the divine order. Our generation is a generation, and when I say our generation, um, the, with emphasis to the kind of ministry we have in our generation. It's, 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 it's a kind of formation that gives no cognizance to the divine order. So people are just running the rat race, not, not knowing that God will not accept just any sacrifice. There are prescriptions that God has laid down in his word as touching things that he can accept and as touching things that he can reward. All right? And I'd like us to do a few investigations in scripture. Once again, you are welcome in the name of Jesus. Because of the time we spent in getting our guests from the airport to... Um, the place of rest. I'm not going to take too much of your time. And we are going to stop this, my own session, and we'll continue it subsequently during uh, one of our evening uh, services. Because I want us to see the five kinds of rewards that there are in the age that is to come. And what you need to do in order for you to qualify. But if you follow the lectures yesterday, are you, are you here? Are you here? If you follow the lectures yesterday, you will discover that there are two who were confronted with two aspects of the father. He sees in secret. And he what? He is in secret. Now, don't forget those two aspects of the father that were revealed in the protocol, the prescription for rewards. Don't forget it, because we'll be making reference to it, and that is what is going to guarantee that you actually have a reward, because uh, the one that sees in secret is the one that rewards openly. 
The one that sees in secret and the one that is in secret is the one that rewards openly. So yesterday we were not able to see the third hypocrite. The first hypocrite is with giving alms. Second hypocrite is with prayer. And then the third kind of hypocrite can be seen in fasting. Are you with me? You're not with me. Are you there? Yes, so let us investigate the fasting hypocrite. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then when we are done with this, I'm going to show you in the, the next lecture we, 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 we hold on this matter, I'm going to show you a full layout of the reward syllabus completely in all 142 scriptures because I read those scriptures on this matter. You will not find any other scriptures on that subject in the Bible. So I did a complete study of the scriptures that have to do with this subject, 142 scriptures, in order to come up with a systematic presentation of the theology around the reward system. Exactly? Are you with me? Okay. All right, so let us do something quickly. Um, Matthew chapter 6, we'll do from 16 to 18. Matthew chapter 6, we'll do from 16 to 18. When we finish this one, then I can go into some deeper matters, if the time will allow me. Who is there in Matthew chapter 6 from verse 16? Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily, I say unto you, they have their reward. So, do you still remember our definition of a hypocrite? And it's very easy for you to be a hypocrite when you are doing things in church, when you are carrying out some form of service in the house of God. It's very easy easy for you to be a hypocrite if you are not conscious and sensitive to him that is in secret. Do you ever ask yourself, how does God see this argument that I just had? How does he see this contention I just had with my wife? If you are blind to that, it means you are not conscious of the one that sees in secret. You need to confront yourself again and again with this question. How does he see this little video I watched on YouTube? This little video I watched on Facebook. How does he see it? Because if you don't probe yourself that way, you are likely not to become sensitive to him. And the moment you lose your sensitivity to him, you become a hypocrite. And there is no hypocrite that is suitable for a reward from a God that sees in secret. So once and again, you need to confront yourself. How does he see this matter? The moment you ask yourself that question, light will come to you. And then you will know whether you need to ap apologize on some matters so that you can, you can be in the good books of him that sees in secret. Because the reward regime that is set in place in time and in eternity is managed by your father that sees in secret. So it's a very healthy Christian practice for you to confront yourself once and again with the question, how does he see this matter? How does he see this matter. Someone the, the other time, 
said he was given a contract and then he was called behind the scene and told that he's going to inflate the figure of the contract to accommodate soft landing for some participants that were instrumental in securing uh, the contract. And uh, he was confused on whether to go ahead or not. You don't need to be confused. Just ask yourself, how does he that see in secret, how will he consider this matter? Because if you bring the matter into the world of men, mm -hmm. say, okay, all right. But unfortunately, for all of us, it's not men that are going to reckon with us. It is the one that sees in secret. So the moment we brought that element into the discussion, there was no question again. Questions will linger if the context that you have brought the matter is a context of men. But the moment we take it away from the context of men and we introduce him that sees in secret, then you will know that that which will not be pleasing to him that sees in secret. Are you there? It's called hypocrisy. And it is irritating to him. It is detestful to him. And it is such hypocrisy that disqualifies people from the rewards. So our God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So you see, in, even in fasting, we see hypocrisy. The guy is trying to show that he is doing something spiritual. And the audience he wants to impress is the physical audience, is, is men. But the true spiritual man wants to impress the one that is in secret. So even though men do not approve of his ways, do not approve of his style, that's okay for him because he knows his first audience and he knows who is out to please. If you are genuinely out to please God, you will find out that most of the time you will not be in the good books of men. Most of the time. And I can show you a few scriptures that speak about men pleasers. Men pleasers cannot succeed in pleasing men and pleasing God at the same time. You will need to choose one. You need to choose one. When you go all out to please God, and that's your preoccupation, people will call you a radical. Because you are, you are not fitting into the current context. And it, that was how John the Baptist was. He was in a context that afforded him alignment with God, and so he could say, Thus said the Lord to his generation. And even though his ministry was in the wilderness, it was not a limitation to him because the cities traveled. In cities like Judea, there was no one left. When John the Baptist is preaching, the whole city becomes empty. Don't visit Judea when John the Baptist is on his campaign, his ministry campaign, because you will not meet anybody that you intend to see. The Bible says, and all Judea went to him in the wilderness. All Judea. His dress code was not the kind of dress code that was contemporary. He was still moving around with camel skin. His menu was not on the table in most of our restaurants. Because he, he could make do with wild honey and locusts. That's the kind of person you call a Jew. But even his menu was prescribed by inspiration. He was a man that did not care about how society saw him. He only cared about how God saw him. And if you know, are you there? The prophecy that came before his birth, the Bible says he, he shall be great in the sight of God. So a man that is going to be great in the sight of... I studied the life of John the Baptist. I wanted to know, what does it mean to be great in the sight of God? And what it means is to make God your audience and to close your eye to every other audience. If you are right with God, if you can walk with God, do you have the courage to do that? That's what I'm asking. Do you have the courage? Not to care about anyone, anything, the only thing you care about is being right with God. And when people feel you are crazy and they say you are mad, your relatives say you are, you are sick, you don't even have the time to respond. 
Don't have the time to respond. Because right there in the privacy of your spirit, the Lord rejoices in you. So in order for him not to confront you with bitter judgment in the day when he sets up uh, the judgment seat of Christ, there are little judgments that he administers, which is the one that is in your heart. That the way you spoke now is offensive to me. The way I see it from the secret, this your anger is of the devil. So he's protesting. And then when you understand the rhythm of his protest and you decide to bow down in repentance, it means that you have made him your first audience. You can can walk away from the way people feel, but you cannot walk away from the way he feels. That's the kind of believer that he's going to set up in the open and he's going to exalt before the eyes of men. So the same men for which hypocrites become hypocrites. Are you you there? Because the reason why a hypocrite is a hypocrite is because he wants to please men. Those same men that that become hypocrites because they want to please men, they will still be there when God decides that this one whose preoccupation is to make me happy, make me glad, he wants to do my will, he wants to align with me, he wants to do the things I want him to do according to my prescription, it is still that audience, either in this life or in the life that is to come, that this our God that is in secret and sees in secret is going to reward you. So you can decide to reward yourself by making an impression on the public and violating the divine order and ignoring the judgment that he is administering in your spirit because you are not sensitive to your inward and your secret parts, which is his dwelling place and his tabernacle. And then you continue like that, especially when you are gaining from it, making some profit, making some gains from that thing that you are doing that is contrary to the divine order. It means that you do not consider him worthy of any attention. He will not complain. There is a day that he reckons with all things. Then you, you will clear your doubts and say all the breath that you, you breathe in and out, this is the quantity for the lifetime you spent upon the face of the earth you will need to account for what you use that bread to do, which was something that was captured in his kingdom. So we'll move gradually, and then you'll see the consequence of ignoring the God that is in secret and the God that sees in secret. I remember I started from the book of 2 John, chapter 1, verse 8, where John spoke about the full reward because there are partial rewards in time, but the ultimate reward that will come from him is in eternity. If you are still with me, say, Amen. Amen. But when thou, but thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father, which is in secret and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee what? openly hallelujah he's saying it's not a show service to me genuine service that is motivated by love for me and for my people is not a show it's something that is done as unto me, and such works that are done as unto me, I will surely reward. All right, lesson two. Are you there? Okay. In lesson two, I I took time yesterday night to find out, to look at all the scriptures in the New Testament, especially in the epistles, to factor out every time the apostles spoke about a reward so that we can categorize it and understand it adequately. Then, when we understand this, I will now show us the time for reward. I will now show us the, 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 the philosophy behind reward. Are you there? Okay, so come with me. Then we'll move to the next item on the agenda, which is 
the prescription for service. You know, we are still touching prescription for rewards. We'll do prescription for service. Then we'll do prescription for prosperity. If you want to prosper, you want to have material and financial prosperity, there is a prescription for it. The prescription of the Bible. So there are seven items for which I want to show you prescriptions. In these prescriptions, we, if we need to go to the Old Testament to see the types so that you can see that it's adequately consolidated in Scripture, we will have the time to do all that level of exploration. So number one, we're just doing a documentary of the rewards that the Bible spoke about uh, in the New Testament. In the New Testament. Okay? First type of reward is what we call reward for righteous deeds. Rewards for righteous deeds. Rewards for righteous deeds. That's what we just studied. All the three things we studied now is what captures the rewards for righteous deeds. And righteous deeds, as we have studied, includes giving alms, it includes praying and includes fasting. Are you there? In giving alms, just what we saw from uh, uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 2 to 4. In praying, Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, verse 5 to 15. In fasting, Matthew chapter 6, verse 16 to 18. This is these are rewards for righteous deeds. So when you do righteous deeds, the Bible reveals that you will have a reward. But I've told you what makes your reward efficacious is that you are sensitive to him that is in secret and him that sees in secret. Never be a performer. Please let me preach to your neighbor. Never be. Never be a performer. Be a man or a woman that walks with God. So for your righteous deeds, God is going to reward you. Especially if the deeds you are doing is according to prescription. He's going to reward you. Is that clear? Second point. The Bible speaks about a prophet's reward. Matthew chapter 10 verse 41. A prophet's reward. Matthew chapter 10, verse 41. All right, let's do 40, then 41. If you have a good Bible, the heading for 40, 41, and 42. The heading, if you have a good Bible, is rewards. Is this so in your Bible? Eh? Is this so? Oh, you're not there. Then you don't have a good Bible. Change that Bible. Change it. Amen. <laughs> you need a good Bible. You need a good Bible. He said, he that receiveth you, receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. You there. This is, the, this is the principle. If anyone by any means receives anyone that is sent from God. You know, I told you that rewards have a temporary manifestation in the natural, but the ultimacy of rewards or what the Bible calls a full reward is not going to... Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. In your precious name, amen. Congratulations to you. 
If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you!